Hello everyone and welcome to our class. This is the second lesson in music and what we're going to talk about today is the early western musical forms. So for our learning competency, at the end of the lesson you'll be able to explain the performance practice which includes the cell theme, composition, role of composers and performers, and the audience during the medieval, renaissance, and baroque periods. So the coverage of our lesson will talk about the vocal music of medieval periods, which includes the sacred and secular music and their musical instruments. And then we'll also talk about the Renaissance music, which includes the same topic, and Baroque music, which we will discuss the instrumental forms that were created during that time. By the way, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel where I post all the lessons in MAPI Grade 9. And if you also like this video, please leave a like and comment after the lecture has ended. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the musical forms and instruments from the medieval period. Because of the domination of the early Catholic Church during the medieval period, sacred music was the most prevalent. Much of the preserved and notated music is sacred or church music. So pag inabi natin sacred music, it means church music or religious music. Gregorian chant is the central tradition of the Western plain chant. And then there is also what we call troubadour music that emerged and was performed across Europe. Chansons and motets are also in style of during the time in early liturgical polyphony. So, meron tatlong klase ng music na nakreate nung panahon ng medieval period. And those are, first, the Gregorian chant, and then second is the troubadour music, and lastly, are your cham chansons and motets. First, let's discuss the meaning of Gregorian chant. Gregorian chant is the most important chant during the medieval period, and it was named after Pope Gregory the Great, who collected organized and standardized liturgical chants in the 6th century. Here is an example of a recording of a Gregorian chant. Another type of music from the medieval period is what we call troubadour music. Actually, yung word na troubadour is a person. It refers to a person or a performer. So, troubadour music is a French medieval lyric poet composing and singing in Provencal France. So, that happened during the 11th to 13th century. Especially, their theme is about courtly love. So, nung end ng ng medieval period, hindi na purely sacred yung music na pinapakinggan ng mga tao kasi nga, na-introduce yung tinatawag natin na troubadour music. And troubadour music is not sacred. It is a secular type of music. And when we talk about secular music, it pertains to music that is not religious. So, usually the theme of, of, of secular music is about love or friendship or about nature basta anything siya na hindi related sa kahit anong religious belief and troubadour music is one of that now let's listen to an example of a troubadour music This is the example of a troubadour music. Now let's discuss the different musical instruments from the medieval period. First, we have the bagpipe, and it is a musical instrument with reed pipes that are sounded by the pressure of wind emitted from a bag squeezed by the player's arm. So this is what it looks like, 
And then the second one is what we call lute. And this is a stringed musical instrument having a long fretted neck and a hollow typical pear-shaped body with a vaulted back. So the itura niya, it's like a pear shape. And then mapapansin natin na yung dulo ng lute is parang naka, naka baliko yung kanyang fret. Yan. So this is what it looks like. And then we have the recorder, which is a woodwind instrument of ancient lineage made without a reed. So it is the forerunner of the flute, but is end-blown. So ito yung typical na itsura ng isang recorder. And lastly, we have the frame drums, which were played in the ancient Middle East and rich medieval Europe through Islamic culture. Their shape varies. They may have one or two heads, so maaring baliktaran yung kanyang surface, and they may have attached jingles or snare. So usually, meron mga naka-attach sa kanya ng mga bells para kapag pinapalo siya, para nag-rattle yung sound niya. So those are the musical instruments from the medieval period. Now let's discuss the music of the Renaissance period, particularly the musical forms and musical instruments that originated from that era. Renaissance music is sometimes called the golden age of a cappella choral music because the music did not need instrumental accompaniment. So yung mga music na nakreate ng Renaissance period are mostly choral pieces. Pag sinabi natin choral pieces, this is performed by choir. So... However, in the early 14, 1470s, music starts to be printed in press. At yun na nga yung gaya na diniscuss ko na lang karaan, nauso yung pag, na, na create na yung printing press. And that is the reason why mas maraki yung nagiging distribution ng mga printed music. Kaya mas marami yun yung nakakapag-perform ng mga compositions ng composer. Also, during this century, a tradition of famous makers began for many instruments. These makers were masters of their craft. Example is yung Duchel for his trumpets and so forth and so on. Yung mga kilalang mga violin makers, instrument makers, usually nag nakilala sila or nag nagsimula sila nung, nung craft nila nung panahon ng Renaissance period. So there are different vocal music from the Renaissance period. Since most of the music from the Renaissance period are choral music, and one of them is what we call mass. So mass is a form of sacred musical composition that sets text of the Eucharistic liturgy into music. So yung liturgy na, na naginagamit sa iloob ng, ng, ng simbahan is nilagyan siya ng, nilapatan siya ng musika at yun yung tinatawag natin na mass. There are different characteristics of the mass. First, it is polyphonic. Pag sinabi natin polyphonic, there are two or more melodies sounding together. So, gaya ng idea ng choir, di ba? Merong mga, meron nagme-melody, and then meron nag, nag sa second voice, may nag third voice, and nag fourth voice. That is the idea of polyphonic. And that is the car one of the characteristics of a mass. Second is that it may be sung in a cappella or with orchestral accompaniment. So unlike yung sa traditional Gregorian chant na talagang purely walang musical instrument, ang, ang Renaissance Mass, may, pwede siyang kantahin ng acapella or maaari din naman siyang mayroong instrumental accompaniment, particularly accompanied by the orchestra. So text may be syllabic, which means one note set to each syllable, pneumatic, or a few notes set to one syllable, or melismatic, where many notes are set to one syllable. So those are the characteristics of a mass. Now there are five main sections of a mass, particularly the Kairi, or also known as Lord have mercy, Gloria, or glory to God in the highest, Credo, or I believe in one God, Sanctus and Benedictus, or Holy, Holy, and Blessed is He, and Agnus Day, or Lamp of God. Now let's listen to an example of a mass.
Another type of Renaissance vocal music is what we call madrigal. This is a secular vocal polyphonic music composition which was originated from Italy. It is written and expressed in a poetic text and sung during courtly social gatherings. It is the most important secular form during the Renaissance period. There are different characteristics of the madrigal. First, again, it is polyphonic, meaning there are two or more melodies sounding together. Second, it is sung in a cappella. Third, it is thorough composed. And lastly, frequently in three to six voices. So, kumpara sa mas, mas mahaba siya and at the same time, uh, usually, mas marami yung kumakanta sa isang madrigal. Now, let us talk about the Renaissance musical instruments. First is the violin. So, the violin was invented during the Renaissance period and it is a bowed instrument that evolved during the Renaissance period. It is probably the best known and most widely distributed musical instrument in the world. Yan. So, diba? Yung violin, it, it is a bowed instrument. Ibig sabihin, gumagamit siya ng bow and it is composed of four strings. Second is yung organ. Organ is a complex wind instrument that employs one or more keyboards to operate valves that admit air into a series of individual pipes which make a sound. So it's a keyboard instrument na instead na nakakita naman siguro kayo ng piano, instead na pinapalo yung, sound, yung, yung, yung strings, ang ginagawa sa kanya is merong hang, pag pinindot mo siya, merong hangin na lalabas para hihipan niya yung mga pipes na yon. So, doon na po produce yung sound ng isang organ. Kaya sinasabi siya na complex wind instrument kasi pinapindot siya and at the same time, para din siyang wind instrument. Third, we have the cornet, which is a curved instrument with finger holes like a recorder and it, it is usually made of wood or ivory with the mouthpiece similar to those used on present-day brass instruments and with a, a brush trumpet-like sound. So, ito yung itura ng isang cornet. And lastly, we have the harpsichord. So, harpsichord is a keyboard instrument precursor of the piano in which the strings are set in vibration by plucking. So, as you can see, kamua din siya ng piano that the only difference is that sa piano, yung mga strings ay pinupukpok na ng hammer. While in harpsichord, yung strings is pinapluck ng mga parang hooks. Kaya pag pindot mo ng key, magpa-pluck yung, yung hook na yun dun sa strings, creating a musical sound. So that is a harpsichord. And another trivia is that yung kulay ng harpsichord is kabaligtara ng kulay ng piano, wherein yung blackies ng piano ay, na, ay, ay nagiging white keys sa harpsichord. And the other way around naman, yung white keys ng piano nagiging kulay black naman sa harpsichord. And lastly, let's discuss the music from the Baroque period, particularly the musical forms and instruments from the Baroque period. The word Baroque came from a Portuguese word, Baroco, which means pearl of irregular shape. This was originally a derogatory term, implying poor taste and excessive elaboration and ornamentation. So, nakaraan niskes natin how the people from the Baroque period try to express their emotions and their creativity to, to an extent na parang sobra-sobra na siya. Yun yung characteristic ng Baroque period. And yung music hindi siya naka-escape dun sa ganong klase style ng Baroque style. So Baroque music was intended for at least three main functional categories. The first is religious music for the churches. Second is chamber music for the courts of the nobility. And lastly is the theatrical music, especially the opera, for the general public. So there are different musical genres of the Baroque period. First, we have concerto. Concerto is a, music, is a, is a, is a musical composition, particularly for the instrument, that employs a solo instrument accompanied by an orchestra. So as you can see in the picture, there is a, an orchestra. And then there is a soloist. So once we na makakita tayo ng ganitong klase ng, ng, ng performance, musical performance, that is what we call concerto. So there are different types of concerto. It could be a violin concerto wherein yung soloist is a violinist or it could be a piano concerto wherein the soloist is a pianist. The second is what we call concerto grosso. So kung sa concerto is binubuo ng 
Solubista at saka orchestra, ang Concerto Grosso naman is a common type of orchestral music from the Baroque period that is characterized by a small group of soloists also known as concertino and a full orchestra which is known as tutti. So halos parehas lang din naman siya ng concerto. The only difference is that walang soloist kundi meron tayong tina- yung, yung kasama ng orchestra is tinatawag na concertino. Kumbaga mas smaller group of uh, musicians plus the orchestra. Next is what we call fugue. So a fugue is a contrapuntal piece developed mainly by imitative counterpoint. So kasi sinabi natin counterpoint, there is this first melody and then there is a counter melody na tumutugtog or sum- sumasabay simultaneously dun sa main melody na yon. Parang dalawang melody siya na naglalaban sa isa't isa. And that is what we call fugue or a, contra, a contrapuntal piece. Two melodies uh, that are opposing each other and sounding uh, simultaneously or sabay na tumutugtog. So that is what we call fugue. And of course, we have large instrumental form and that is what we call opera. So, lagi natin ito narinig, pero hindi natin alam what is the meaning of an opera. So, an opera is a form of theater in which music has a leading role and parts are taken by the singer but distinct from a musical theater. So, kadalasan kasi na-associate natin ng opera sa isang musical theater. So, such a work is typically a collaboration between a composer and librethist and incorporates a number of the performing arts such as acting, scenery, costume, and sometimes dance or ballet. The performance is typically given to an opera house accompanied by an orchestra or a smaller musical ensemble. So in traditional opera, singers employ two styles of singing. We have recitative, which is a speech-inflicted style, and self-constrained arias. So ang isang opera, binubuo siya ng recitative part at aria part. So, pag sinabi natin na recitative, ito yung parang half-spoken na din na nire-recite ng, ng actor or ng actress, yung kanyang line. As if yung para pasalita niyang ginagawa. While yung aria naman is like a solo, is, it's a solo piece na kung saan yung, yung, yung performer, mag-isa lang siya na kinakanta niya yung, yung dialogue niya. So nakita nyo, yung isa parang pasalita siya, nagkikwento siya, nagsasa, nag, 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 dinasabi niya yung dialogue niya. While yung aria naman, yung dialogue niya is kinakanta niya. Kaya yung suli ang natatandaan sa isang opera is yung mga aria, yung mga sikat na solo part ng mga actors and actresses. And then opera is a drama set to music in its entirety made up of vocal pieces with instrumental accompaniment and usually with orchestral overture and over, uh, interlude. So overture, it means introduction, and interlude is yun yung nasa gitna na music. So it originated in Italy at the end of the 16th century. So there are different types of opera, but the most uh, common are the opera seria and opera buffa. When we say opera seria, this was the most prestigious and the leading Italian opera. Kaya sinabing opera seria kasi this is a serious opera. Usually these are about uh, the stories of ancient Greek and Roman heroes. And then the other one, the other type of opera is what we called the opera buffa which is a comedy of a comic opera or comedy na, na baroque opera. And yun naman ay usually ang intended naman niya ay eh, syempre magpatawa. Yan. So, paras parehas lang yan, dalawa na yan, nasikat na klase ng opera. Now, let's talk about oratorio. So, oratorio is a large-scale musical composition for orchestra and voices that incorporates narrative on religious themes. So, this is also like opera. It's also a large-scale musical composition like an opera. But the only difference is that yung context ng oratorio is more on religious themes. So, this is usually performed without the use of costume, scenery, or action. So, walang umaarte, walang costumes, wala ding scenery. And it is usually written in a native language for the, in, for, for the intended audience. And one of the most famous oratorio written during the Baroque period is the Messiah by George Frederick Handel featuring the famous Hallelujah Chorus. Mamaya, papakinggan natin yung mga examples ng uh, 
uh, opera, oratorio, concerto, and then concerto grosso. Para ma-differentiate natin silang lahat. And lastly, we have choral. So it is a musical composition that resembles, that resembles a harmonized version of hymnal tunes of the Protestant Church during the Baroque area. So ito yung parang mass ng Renaissance, but the only difference is that hindi siya Catholic, kundi Protestant Church. Yun. So that is a choral. Para siyang mass na meron din siyang polyphony, pero yung text niya is usually about Protestant Church. Now let's listen to samples of compositions from the Baroque period. So this is an example of a concerto, a violin concerto. Now here is another example of a concerto grosso. Here's an example of an opera. In questo liete fortunato giorno, capo sto fine agli amorosi avanni del nostro semideo, cantiam pastori in si soavi accenti che sian degni d'Orfeo nostri concenti. And lastly, here is an example of the oratorio. And the title of this oratorio is The Messiah by George Frederick Hanbury. So that ends my discussion for today. I hope that you learned something from me. If you have any question, just post it on our, on our comment box. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe so that you will be up updated sa mga content na ipinapost ko. Again, thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you again next time.